most of most of the uh, the reason, the rationale for the discussion that uh, thus far today with the financials and, and the, the rate studies and uh, system development fees and, and whatnot really uh, have led up to this presentation on the wastewater treatment plant replacement project. This is a project that has been um, in the works and talked about for well over a decade and has uh, at times been delayed uh, for various uh, economic reasons. Um, when you start a project like this and, and you make projections on what future wastewater treatment capacity uh, is going to be needed over over a 10 year period, you know, it, that continues to have to be refined over time. Um, but we are coming up on on a time period now that uh, we're, we, we in the city of Monroe uh, are needing to make a decision on the project uh, to, to go forward or not. Um, the project has, is it what, over 70% uh, in, in its 60 percent, 60%, 60%, 60%, 60%, 60%, 60%, 60%, 60%, 60%, 60%, 60%, 60%, 60%, 60%, 60%, 60%, 60%, 60%, 60%, 60%, 60%, 60%, 60%, 60%, 60%, 60%, 60%, 60%, 
for your community and your constituents. Uh, we have been very, very fortunate over the last five to ten years just to be really engaged in most of the local communities here where it comes to wastewater treatment and, and capacity expansions and upgrades. We, in the process of right now of working or in, in construction of a $300 million project for the city of Charlotte, their brand new wastewater treatment plant. And I'm saying some of these things because I understand that cost is a big component right here. And I want to provide you a little background information about where our cost numbers came from. We just didn't get them out of here. These are real cost numbers. We have also have uh, expanded the plant over at Fort Mill. That was a $50 million project a few years ago. We're working on about a $300 million project over at Rock Hill right now, plus another $100 million, plus we're completing a $90 million project for Rock Hill. So I say all these things not to brag about Hazen and Sawyer, but just to give you enough information to know that we have been doing this and working with uh, local contractors and regional contractors and national contractors that the numbers that we are presenting today are real numbers. And to also give you the perspective that this is a great area. People are flocking here and people will continue to flock here and this community will grow. And so you need that capacity one way or the other or else it's going to be grabbed by other people in the surrounding area. So here's the outline for today. Uh, I'm just going to give you a real, real brief overview of your treatment process. Uh, we're going to look at what drives these capacity expansions. And again, it's basically population. Um, we're going to, I'm going to provide you a little bit of history and the drivers about this project. Uh, Mr. Watson managed, uh, mentioned before that this project has been talked about for 10 years. I can say it's been talked about probably for 25 years. Uh, because I started working on this plant back in the 1990s and actually did a design back in the late 1990s to expand the plant that, that, that was then shelled. Okay, and we'll, we'll talk about that. Um, and then we'll go over some of the site plans and some of the options and, that we explore. And we'll, we'll talk about the cost and we'll talk about some value engineering that we did to try to reduce the cost and get within your budget. And again, that's not unique in itself either. Costs are always coming high, especially at this 30, 60 percent level. And we always have to step back and say, so, okay, how can we give you what you need in your available funding, your available budget, if that makes sense. I will also then present some area cost of recent wastewater stream plant expansions and upgrades. Uh, just so you can see that, again, this is not unique. This is not even unique to North Carolina. This is unique throughout the country. Hazen does plans for New York City, for Miami-Dade, for LA Water and Power, for the city of San Francisco. We're, we are all seeing these accelerated uh, costs of construction that are putting, uh, that are crimping uh, available budgeting and funding. So again, not unique. It's not justifiable, but it's, or it, whether it's justifiable or not, I'm just saying it's just not unique. So here's a, a, an aerial overview of your wastewater treatment plant. What's, what's neat about this is that this is a brand new uh, asset that just went into place. This is your new 15 million gallon flow equalization facility. So there was a lot of discussion about I and I, and and this actually helps to attenuate your flow into your plant so you can pass it through and treat it at your treatment plant. So this is 15 million gallons. It was actually placed in service, what, Brandon, three weeks ago? A little longer than that, probably. Maybe a month or so ago, where there was a big storm coming in, we actually had to go get that permit to, to operate from the state to, because the storm was coming in. It, it did a great job. It basically allowed you not to have any overflows at your plant. In the foreground, or actually background, is your existing treatment plant. That plant was built and constructed back in the 1960s. So we're coming up on almost 60 years of, a, of, a, of, a, of an asset that needs to be renewed, that needs to be <coughs> looked at. Now again, we've worked at plants that are over 100 years old. City of Charlotte's got two of them. Well, getting up there, 1928 I guess it was, two of their plants. But in New York City, a lot of plants too, 80, 90 years old. So again, you get to that point in time where you have to renew some of those existing assets, or even just replace the whole thing in totality. So why are we here today and talking about why do we need to expand this plant by 3 million gallons per day? This existing plant that you have right now is 
is, ten, is rated for a plant capacity. The state reads these plants and says that you can't put more than 10.4 million gallons per day in that treatment plant on a maximum month basis, on a 30-day on a, on a period, okay, on an average. Um, typically, right now, we have approached, we, we've actually had a maximum month value of 10.6 million gallons per day. And that happened back in January 2024. So over that 30, 30 day period, January 1st to January 31st, we average, or I should say you average, or the plant staff average, 10.6 million gallons per day. There weren't any violations other than they violated the permit because of flow, because they had to be more than 10.4, okay? Now again, the plant can handle more than 10.6 million gallons a day. It can actually handle up to 20, but only on intermittent periods, okay? That's a big distinction. We talked about I&I &I and all the I&I &I coming in. We see those big flows coming in during rainstorm events where we might see 20 MGD coming to the plant, 40 MGD coming to the plant. But for a sustained treatment to meet our limits discharging our receiving water body, we've got to be below that 10.4. So what this graph here is showing is that we have uh, time on the horizontal axis, and we got flow on the vertical axis. And what we're doing is that we're, we are projecting, based upon the year, 2020, 2020, 2025, all the way up to 2045, what that flow is rising. And flow is proportional to population, okay? It's linear, it's proportional. So as the city grows and more and more people come in, then our flow rate to our wastewater treatment plant is going to increase proportionally. It would be the same thing in our water treatment plant to your water treatment plant. Um, so what this plant is showing is that we are going to approach our 10.4 MGD capacity uh, somewhere in that, boy, that's hard to see, 10.4, right around 2030, okay? And the state basically says that once you get within 80% of your rated capacity, you're, you are dictated or mandated to start engineering uh, and making plans for that expansion. And at 90%, you've actually got to start construction, okay? And if not, then you can't allow anybody else to come in. That's more or less the bottom line. So that's what's called the 80-90 rule. And so typically on a plant like this, it might take you a couple of years to do an engineering report, do a uh, design. It takes you uh, three to six months to bid the project, and then it might take another two or three years to construct it. So we're pushing up on that time frame right now, right? If we need to have, uh, if we're going to run out of capacity at around 2030. What this is also showing, though, is that that 3MGD that, that's being proposed right now should take you out till, what, 2040, 2040. So that's, a, that's, what is that, 15 years from now. That 3MGD expansion now equates to basically nine to 10,000 homes. <laughs> Multiply that by three, three people per home, that's 30,000 people. That almost doubles the capacity of the city of Monroe. You're at a population right now, I believe around 35, 37, 38,000. So you're talking about if you can, this 3MGD expansion will almost double the population, unless you got some sort of industry coming in or, or commercial, that's really going to be a big, uh, a big demand, all right? I'm just going to stop there for a second. Does that make sense? Any questions on that? Yes? What you designed? What you designed in the 90s, is it still a viable foundation? That's a great question. So, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll give a shout out to the plant and to Scott's predecessor and people that worked there at the plant in the 90s. They did a really, very good, great job. They were great stewards of, of the city's uh, funding. Uh, and, and I know, know those people personally. The question is, though, is, is the plant adequate? Yes and no. A lot of the infrastructure is still, the brick and mortar, the bases, the concrete, is still in good shape. 
Some of the equipment is antiquated, needs to be replaced. But the biggest thing is, is that what drives our industry, our president used to say, is two things, population and regulation. That what keeps us consultants busy is population, people moving in, because that requires expansions of water treatment plants, expansions of wastewater treatment plants. But the second thing is regulation. And the regulations have become more and more stringent over the last 30 years. It used to be that if you could just collect all the wastewater in Central Point, screen it a little bit, take out some of the nasties, and discharge it. And I heard somebody in the hallway say earlier this morning, the solution to pollution is dilution, right? That doesn't fly anymore, but that's the way it was back in the Clean Water Act in 1972 when people did, did discharge that. I'll get to your answer. Now, though, now, now we've got to remove even more pollutants, okay? Now we're concerned about nutrients, ammonia, and phosphorus. And the reason being is because if you discharge those in a receiving stream, the stream can become eutrophic, which means nutrient-rich. And anybody that's ever driven the country roads in North Carolina, Monroe, and, and in Union County will know, you look in a farm pond, and what do you see in June, July? You see algae, right? And algae is the detriment to any receiving stream or farm pond because it sucks the oxygen out and it kills all the aquatic wildlife. So that's why EPA came in and the states come in, and now we have to remove that phosphorus and nitrogen. The, the, the issue with that, or not the issue, is that it costs a lot of money because it create, you have to build a lot more infrastructure, a lot more treatment based volume. Does that answer your question? Sort of? Absolutely. Okay. And, and back in the day, too, we didn't have to do filtering. We didn't have to do a lot of disinfection. Now, those limits are ratcheted down. So the water that we're discharging to our receiving stream is so much better than what's in our receiving, receiving stream right now. And that's why you're seeing people in other municipalities across the country basically uh, using that water instead of discharging it, recycling it back and putting it through a water treatment plant and drinking it, either directly, indirectly, or directly. So I just want to give you a little bit of history uh, about this plan. Uh, I, I mentioned that I had started working on this plan back in the mid-90s, and uh, Hazen designed the inflow pump station number two. Uh, we designed the aeration basin number five back in the 1990s. Uh, in 1998, 1999, we actually developed design documents to expand the plant from, at that time, 9 MGD to 12 and a half MGD. And at that time, your previous director, Russ Popath, came on board from Arizona. And Russ made the correct call at that time. He said, I'm going to defer this project because you had a local industry that pulled out. And they were a big water demand user and a big wastewater treatment discharge. And at that time, we were up to that point, pretty, pretty close, about the same point, 80%. And when that industry left, flows dropped down to like six and a half or something to that effect. Does that ring a bell? It, it, was, it was some water user. I, I want to say like AVAC, but that's not right. Um, I can't remember what it was. All back. Well, maybe, maybe it was a different process, but, but there was something that the water demand dropped, the wastewater dropped. We also had a drought during that time, and flows just plummeted. And it was, it, it, we couldn't justify that. that that, that expansion. Um, and, and I bring that up in, in, in the sense that since then, since 2000, there's been very little uh, improvement projects at the plant. We replaced some screens, we replaced some blowers, uh, the staff built a new admin building, we replaced some clarifiers. But typically, you would think over a 20, typically, what we have seen over a 20 year, 25 year period is that even if plants don't have to expand their plant, usually there's an improvement project. Um, and, and there wasn't a massive improvement project, which just goes to show that it's due time that, that this plant gets a little bit of a refresher. Um, so, what we, had, what we did then, um, or what Scott asked us to do, is to look at a PER, do basically a preliminary engineering report here in the last uh, couple years of 2022. And I presented this to City Council uh, about a year ago. And uh, in, back in August 2023, it might have been July 2023 when I presented this. And I, I, I was before you and I said, hey, today 
It's going to cost about $100 million. And what I'm showing here is, is, is this just looks like a bunch of rectangles and circles, believe me. We've done, we've done a lot more work than that. We're just trying to really graphically kind of show you what this process is. But the existing plant, it'll still stay in operation. You're still going to use leverage and utilize your existing access. And that's shown in gray. The 3 of GD expansion is shown in purple, which shows 13.4. So again, 10.4 plus 3 is 13.4. We will expand it sometime after around 2040 to another 3 MGD, and that's shown in green. And then eventually, and this this by 50 years out, eventually the existing plant gets decommissioned, and basically you have a brand new plant. But that's many, many, many years out. What this is showing, though, is that uh, uh, we're at, at this time we're, we're building two aeration bases, two clarifiers. Uh, filters and uh, UV disinfection to base to, to not basically to treat 3MGD, but to hydraulically pass 9 million gallons per day. And I just want to say something about the previous talk about I and I. Every utility has I and I. In fact, that's why you design your plant with a certain peaking factor to pass and to accommodate that. Uh, typically, we have seen plants have a peaking factor of anywhere from three. To four, so uh, city of Raleigh, 60 MGD plant, but they can pass 180 million gallons per day through their treatment process. Most plants are that way. The state requires that you have to at least pass two and a half times your permitted capacity. So again, it, very very important getting your I and I out, but you you still got to design your plant to handle that I and I, that extraneous water anytime there's a, a, a rainfall event. So. A year or so ago, we came up with this number, $100 million. We started doing design. And we started looking at, looking at grading and interest ways and electrical costs and pump stations and things like that. And we put together an estimate, and lo and behold, we're at 140. And we said, whoa, what's going on here? And let me just back up a little bit. That $100 million number that we came up with back in 2023, this number, that number was based upon real numbers that we use for clarifiers, aeration bases, filters uh, of the plant that's being constructed right now today over at Charlotte Water. Those numbers were, uh, the baseline numbers were basically used by, uh, that we got from Garney and Crowder Construction. So those numbers were real. We believe these numbers were real too, but this is just how things have changed even in a year. Now, a little bit different. It's not just about escalation due to construction, it's also due to grading. One of the things that we met together with staff, and we talked about this, we said, okay, what can we do? Uh, one of the things, one of the things they talked about, well, do we really need to move the plant interest road? Do we really need to build these basins right here on top of the hill? Um, do we really need to have an influent pump station? What can we do to, um, try to reduce the cost and get it within budget. And so uh, we had a meeting, we had all our heads and together in a room, we talked about it. And some of the things that uh, we came up with is, well, if we're not constrained, see where those orange rectangles are at? That's an existing EQ basin. If we can, you know, 30 years from now, build there, then that's gonna save some cost. Um, if we can keep our existing interest way in and not do as much grading up on this hill where these other orange bases are at, then again, we can save some costs. Um, if we can retrofit the, influ the existing influent pump station with some new pumps and not have to build a deep, 50-foot deep influent pump station, that's probably what, guys, $30 million? Yes. Ballpark? then we can shave that off too. Uh, and so that's, that's what we're doing. So again, it was getting people in a room, talking it out, getting ideas. It was actually something that Rich and Amy came up with. They said, hey, how about the, some of these ideas? Why don't you explore that? And that's what we did. And so now we believe that we are today, and let me, let me just say this caveat, today we believe the project is worth $100 million. 
maybe not worth, cost $100 million. I said it a year ago, and I'll say it again today, and maybe you guys will run me out and tar and feather me, but none of us know what's going to happen next year, or two years, or three years from now. And I'll show you a draft why. Um, the cost today is in 2024 dollars. It's not in 2028 dollars or 2027 dollars. Um, you know, should escalation be factored in at three percent that we used to use? That's not what the numbers are showing here in the last five years. It's more like 10% a year, or even more. So this is the graph that I was referring to. This is just one index. This is a uh, producer price index. But if you looked at the cons construction cost index, you would see the same rise, 40% increase since 2020 when COVID hit. Again, it, it's not unique to North Carolina. It's not unique to Monroe. We're seeing this throughout the country. Um, we're also, um, we're seeing, and, and was it, is it Brad way back there, electrical? No, your name's not Brad. It's Rob. Rob, I'm sorry, Rob. I, I appreciate what you said because, again, we're seeing that across the country, too, as far as transformers. Three years to get a transformer. Uh, two years to get MCCs. Uh, you know, same thing for VFDs, right, Brandon? Soft starters, whatever. Uh, we're competing. Municipalities are competing against, against high tech, like Google and Meta for chill, chilled water facilities. And they can write the check and they can get ahead of the line in front of us municipalities. I think that's one thing that's driving up electrical costs. Uh, and, and really extending the, these delivery dates and so on. And, and time is money. If, 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 if a contract is being extended because a contractor can't get equipment, well, you're paying the contractor to be on site, his general overhead. Okay, so it, it, there's a compounding effect. What we're also seeing is that there is a, a labor shortage, certainly in this area. Uh, and we'll show you some data here to, to kind of uh, demonstrate that. Um, anyway, questions on that. Does that all make sense? Is that anything new to you all? I know I'm just a plethora of good news. Okay, so. Let me just give you some examples. These are really, really recent projects that Hazen has been involved in, and I think these are all within the last three or four years. Uh, your first, the first project is the Monroe Flow Equalization Basin. Uh, um, our estimate was $4 million, came in at 5.2, just came online. Union County, uh, your, your brother here in Union County, a little package treatment plant, 120,000 gallons per day. It's a rectangle black box, $6 million. And I saw our estimate for that. I go, guys, it can't cost $6 million. And they said, you're right, it costs 10. Uh, that's over uh, near Piedmont High School. Greenville, South Carolina. Uh, we're involved with the owner's advisor on a CMR pipeline program where we are a designer and we're also overseeing the design of three other conveyance projects. This was the first project that we designed. Our estimate was $20 million. We had a construction manager at risk <coughs> because the client was concerned that they could not get enough bidders to bid on their work. So they went out and got a contractor, engaged them, and that price came in $29 million. Um, Charlotte Water, this was at the Franklin Water Treatment Plant. Scott, you're very, very familiar with that. Uh, $45 million, talking to our people, we thought that was high. We got two bidders. Sanders Utility, I forget who the other one was. Uh, $67 million. And they're not even a plant, they're a pipeline contractor doing plant work. Charlotte Water Stove, we did the initial PER, and, and this, no, this is a little hokey, but, but Charlotte Water, 15 MGT, new Greenfield Wastewater Treatment Plant. We did the evaluation. Uh, $220 million, that contract right now, uh, two years after this, $305 million. Plus, they're spending $125 million for a new inflow and pump station for a retreatment facility, plus another $25 million by another consultant due in the solids handling. So all in all, it's $450 million for a 15 MGD plant. Do the math, 450 divided by 15 is what? $30 a gallon. $30 a gallon times three MGD expansion is 90. That's not how we got that number, okay? But it all equates, is what I'm saying. 
Union County, uh, we just uh, expanding their plant from what, seven and a half to nine MGD. We took bids in July, we got one bid. Uh, our estimate was 46, we opened bids yesterday. We got two bidders. Um, one bid was 63 million, and thank God the low bid was only 50 million. Um, and again, that's going from seven and a half to nine, okay? And then last but not least, uh, what is this? This is the biosolids project, which we're really concerned about. It's a new thermal dryer, uh, dewatering facility. I know that probably doesn't mean anything, but it's an $80 million project. We're not sure if we're even going to find a bidder. We've talked to all the air, local and regional general contractors here, and everybody is out of capacity. That's the scary thing. And it's scary because now you might have people coming from out of state that may not be the best reputations that you may not want, right? Um, uh, at least for this particular job. I think we're going to be okay with, with the scheduling of this project because we're still a couple of years away, or at least a year away. Again, more good news, right? Sorry. Uh, project schedule. So, uh, we got the notice to proceed to start designing in, in August, 30% um, in May. We're somewhere in that almost 60% range, 30 to 60% range now. Well, actually, it's going to be more in December. Um, but we are on schedule to be 100% complete by June of 2025. Uh, advertised bid opening in August, basically a year from now, and hopefully have a contractor under contract by November. I think this January 2029 is a year too long. I think it's more of a 30 to 36 month project now that we don't have the influence pump station. So I don't think it's as long as what we're showing right here now, but that's where we're at right now. Questions? Can you go back to that last slide? Sure. This one? <coughs> Uh, Lisa, we, we would be looking at going to markets sometime in August 2025, at sometime between there and the first of the year. Um, with an August bid opening, um, we would need LGC approval in September. If it slips at, in any way, even late August, may push us to an October approval, which we could still do. But if it slips and we don't get bids in until September, late September, we'd have to hit a November LGC meeting, which would mean having to have our annual financial report by September 10th is the deadline. We have no physical way of doing that. We don't have the staff to pull that off. So then we'd have to delay it <coughs> So that we could go to the LGC in December. Um, and, 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 and you guys can control the schedule. This is just something that you know. Typically, we would see you know once you once you finish up with design, we usually have like a three month period for advertising and opening bids and getting some money in the contract. But this this is totally wide open. So even even LGC in December, I mean you're you're into late January, February, uh, They could go to market, I think, right after the LGC approval. I don't think there's that much of a gap in time. So, what, what, is, what in, in your opinion, about the timing of that going to market that in January? Is there pros and cons? In, in the environment that we're in, I'm seeing interest rates continue to go down over time, and as time goes out, you know, whether that'll happen or not, you know, we all would like that crystal ball, but um, I guess I've done, did like Christmas, around Christmas time deals, and it, I don't know that it's been any more favorable than any other time, but, um, you know, we certainly can can do that, that might be better so that we don't get caught, you know, with the bids and just the timing get off or something and and not be able to meet the deadlines.
What, what questions do you all have about this project, the timing of it? No, a year, a year, a year from this facility. ourselves a little bit thinking that we couldn't build there in those right. basins but it's actually cheaper 30 40 years from now to buy some land adjacent to the treatment plant and right. maybe put EQ there and now we can put basins there where it's already excavated and the piping length is shorter so I think that was part of it too we have a lot of grading we had a lot of piping uh, we we know there's rock, or we suspect it's Union County, right? Yeah. Um, so um, th this this new layout lends itself better. Um, the the construction, what you're seeing in blue, is closer in with the existing plan. Right. We're not pushing the contractor out further into that hill that Jim mentioned. Um, so definitely a more focused project, more this value engineering. That was a big part of it. Was was really bringing it more in and trying to limit that grading and electrical work and piping. And then also that would reduce the cost? Yeah, yes. That, that definitely contributes to that reduction from, I guess, 140 million to 100. But then again, also, we're you know, deferring the input pump station. So there's a major facility that's being deferred just, just to defer cost into the future. 
obviously everyone here can speak, but I think everyone is saying since we started talking, material costs have gone up. So let's go ahead and see, get something going and locked in. With your guarantee that it won't go over 99. Personal guarantees. I'll have to float a bond, I think. Yeah. But seriously, I think that's what yes. the consensus is, is the can, there's no more road to kick the can out. Well, I mean, if you look at the number of residences that we have, we, we, we don't have a choice. No. This is not, it's just bad. So what, what's, on the, what's on the books right now is covered in terms of lots, but nothing beyond that. And you know, if you have that industry that comes in that happens to be a heavy water user. That's problem too, you're, you're going to be limited. Yeah, it, it what you want to do is in that industry or corporate or whatever. Yeah, I don't see where it's a good choice. Any other any other questions about <coughs> the process thus far and and how Hazen and our staff have worked together to get to this what I'll I'll call my term a value engineer <coughs> solution at this point. I think it looks good. You obviously do a good job or people will be using you. But you brought up a good point in your a little dissertation there about it, that you can just acquire land in 30 years left. We can barely acquire land now. So if there's more land to acquire, there's something else to be thinking about. You know, you're saying that it would save money, but again, you're in the adjacent property, so. There, 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 there had been talk, and I don't know if I should bring it up or not, Scott, but there, there had been talk about this land order right here to the, the top is north, right to the East of acquiring that. Well, that and we have we have talked about that in just the recent months, but it with the escalating cost of the plant, yeah. you know, what comes first? Yeah. And I don't know you if know, the more immediate need or the future need. You know, yeah. yeah. seventy thousand dollars an acre with the seventy four thousand an acre is the average. Yeah. I wish we got that price in Iowa for farm. From my room, so I want to see that. While, while we're at this point, I just want to say thank you to Rich and Amy and your the rest of your staff that assisted in looking at these plans and, and really trying to get this number down to um, what we see today. So thank you, thank you so much for going to this. And, and I think, and can I just say one other thing too, if you don't mind, Mr. Manager, is that we didn't compromise on the process, okay? We, we are designing these things, looking ahead, knowing that nutrient requirements are coming to Union County, where you're going to have to remove nitrogen, remove phosphorus, or build these basins bigger. We're not putting the equipment in, but when that time comes, we can drop that equipment in and you can go to five-stage treatment and you can remove nitrogen and you can remove phosphorus. So we're, we're, we're not painting in a corner. We're also providing flexibility for, for Kyle so that if one of these basins goes <coughs> down, we can actually bypass around it so we can change out membranes. And what's really, really important here is that this additional treatment train will allow staff to do some of the maintenance on their existing plant to take basins out of service, to replace membranes, to replace just general maintenance that they can't do now because they don't have the capacity. They can't afford to take it down, at least for extended periods of time, to do what they need to do. Council, I um, don't want to put you on the spot, and I don't want to push you into a premature decision, but uh, is, it, do we, is there a consensus on council for staff to proceed uh, where it's 60 percent design to proceed to 100 percent design and and bid the project yes yes yes, yes. yes. Okay. All right. um, and as I stated earlier this morning 
you know, that'll get us to that that point. And then when we have the bid number, and that will actually come back to you, you will, you will have other decisions to make at that time. Um, any other, any other, Scott, is there anything else related to the plant itself that other than proceed to 100% design and bid project? Not, no sir, not at this time. So there's no other, nothing else as far as the plan is concerned. Okay. Then, then the, the next thing I would like to ask council, uh, council's uh, direction on or, or get direction from council on is uh, we have an informal letter from the Union County Public Works Director stating that the county would like to participate in the project, but we do not have a formal commitment or a formal letter from the Union County Board of Commissioners stating that they will participate in the project. We have a letter from a, a director that says, they would like to participate in the project, but we don't have a commitment letter from yes. the county stating that they will or they want to participate in the in the project. And I understand that there, there may be some uh, Richard, there may be some confusion or maybe some questions about the interlocal agreement, what it calls for and doesn't call for, and things like that. But uh, I, I, I would recommend to, that, that council engage the Board of County Commissioners uh, to determine their, their level of commitment in this project because that will impact our rates to our customers and our financing. Do they have another meeting this month? How about uh, Do they have another meeting this month? Can't do the they have another meeting this month? Do the county commissioners have another meeting this month? Monday. It might be this coming. It yeah. might be this coming. Or how about a formal letter? Yeah, better than the letter. Yeah. So the letter, you can ask for it. The, the, we've gotten the, the letter from the county from um, their water resources correct it was clearly written by Lee. Something from the commissioners by the 30th. Would, well then, would it be, uh, would kind of council like for uh, the city attorney to draft a correspondence on its behalf yes. for the mayor's signature yes. to the county uh, requesting requesting making a request An for a formal yeah, like a formal yeah. request by his yeah. 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 yeah actually I actually kind of give you it's they got to give us a couple people to talk to them we got to have a couple people talk to them I think that's almost bad for better I don't think it's been presented to, to the commission. So that's, Are you that's suggesting my, that's my that, that's, that's my, my feeling? It has not been presented. Are you suggesting potentially a meeting, or someone like yourself, Richard, or someone else to go to their meeting to present? I actually think that, that, that it, it, we need to put some behind some seats and have a formal and have a discussion with whether it's a couple of them and a couple of us. Okay. How about the informal request to meet? Okay. I would, I would say that between the city attorney and the mayor and the council, y'all need to come up with, with that correspondence and, and send that to the county commission leadership. Yeah. Uh, formal correspondence to the request because, because if we ask them for a response, I'm not sure they'll get it in front of them in time for them to make a response. We, we just, we need to commit. That's right. what we want to find out. Okay. Okay. Draft that letter, then we'll, we'll sign that again. To the, to the county commissioners. Right. Right. County commissioners requesting a formal meeting 
in October, as soon as possible. Yeah, as soon as possible. Yes. Okay. So, yeah. And I think that one of the one of the, the the outcomes of that potential outcomes of that meeting is clarification for the county based on some information that was just given that that our current plant uh, will not if if it comes offline ever. It will not come offline before 2050. And, and that is contrary to information that, that they, the county understood four or five years ago. So that's a important. That's very important. That's very important. It was presented as more of a emergency. The plant was going to be replaced with a new plant by the end of this decade. So that this they need to have a clear understanding that <laughs> this plant that they own part of is not going away till after mid century. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's that's that that was a huge thing that I took away from what you just said. Yeah. And Mr. Watson, through the agreement, they have an allocated capacity. As far as no ownership in the specific facility, their Say owner, that time? they they have no ownership in the facility. They just okay. have through the agreement allocated capacity of 2.65 million gallons. Thank, thank you, Scott. That was my poor choice of wording. <coughs> Which their current allocated capacity is 24, 24 point, basically <coughs> just under 25 percent allocated capacity in the uh, facility right now. Okay. They How wanted they using. I'm sorry. How much are they using of that? About capacity? one and a half million on average per day, yeah. uh, give or take. Wet weather flow. They have an instantaneous arrival rate of up to uh, a little over six million. That's for instantaneous uh, inflow and infiltration rate. Now, the daily uh, their daily allocated capacity is 2.65. The new plant expansion they are requesting 700,000 gallons of the three million gallons of an expanded capacity, which equates to about 23.33% of the new 3 million gallons. So that would be allocation in the new 3 million gallon, uh, the new 3 million gallon expansion. So that's what they're requesting right now is 23.33%. All of the all of the costs associated with that is paid by them. Yes. But they have not agreed to it, right? That's right. So if they haven't agreed to it, then we don't have to allot those gallons. That's correct. The, the formal agreement has both governing bodies have, that nothing's been amended to. That's why it's critical that this question be asked and answered. Right. The commitment part and the, and the interlocal that, agreement. That's, that's correct. So right. that's correct. Yes. Right. So the additional uh, flow equalization basin we just constructed, just brought online, uh, they, they designed and assisted us with that project. For instance, right now, because of their current capacity of their 24.48% allocation in the existing capacity of the existing plant, they will they are uh, going to reimburse us for that $5 million project, 24.48% of that. Any For the design, for instance, once they, if they decide to come to the table and agree and uh, enter into getting additional capacity of the new three million gallon expansion. They would also be obligated to potentially reimburse us 23.33% of the, the cost of the new design for the expansion and the construction. Yes, sir. This new, this new facility, the $5 million, how, when did it go in service? Last month. Just last month. Last month. So you haven't invoiced them to their portion? No, sir. We're still getting, we're working at the final number with the contractor um, who completed the construction for us. So we're wrapping up the, the final cost, total cost of the project. Then I will include that on our annual true up with Union County. And they want it to be uh, invoiced for the total amount that they owe in the project. Is it's about $1.4 million. Is there a sunset to there? No. No. <laughs> I, it's, I think it's a part of the two. It's a long-term agreement, and it is 
not really well written, well written guys. That's the, that's the reason. There, there's a there's a difference in interpretation regarding that. Um, allocation and ownership. That they that's that's really the the crux of their of the issue. Yes. So Scott, so basically if they don't come into it then we're if if they do come into it, out of this what is it? 100, 120 million in say if it's project. over if it's overrun and you imagine it's going to be about 120 million to actually build this thing, let's imagine. Then they would cover roughly twenty eight million dollars. About 23% of it. Yeah, 23.33% okay. of that. Whatever that so costs. So we would have to cover another 24 million. That's correct. And then at some point, as the east end of the east end of the county, the east of uh, eastern side of the county, that continues to grow and expand over time, they'll need that capacity. They'll have to come to us for that capacity. At some point, yes, sir. But and then, then by that time, it would have been constructed. <coughs> we would have carried the debt. So we would charge them accordingly for that. In other words, if they get in at this point, it would be less for them than if they wait until we've carried this entire thing. Potentially so, yes. So, so it, would, it would financially... That, that, that's going to be a maybe, maybe not, guys. I'm just... Yeah. Don't, 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 put, don't write that in stone in your mind. <clears throat> Regardless of what we do with the agreement, one thing I can tell you regulatory-wise that would not be allowed is we would not be able to shut off that oh, flow. Of course. I mean, I'm just calling that out. But, and, but if, if we're not shutting off the old plant until the middle, I mean, 15, 20 years from now, right? Yes, that's, that's, right. Right. that's correct. They will always have their their uh, capacity at that plant. At that, that, at that plant. Right. That's correct. And so they'll... And they, okay. they, they just necessarily do not interpret that as we do. Well, I guess we'll deal with it. That would be my I know that for a fact. Okay. It's been, it's been in place for several decades now. Now, just, just so you know, I mean, I work well with their staff. We, we sure. communicate because we work together. That's right. That's right. You know, at the end of the day, we serve the public. <laughs> That's right. So, so moving, moving. So, are, are there any other questions for Hazen or staff related to this project? You've got work to do. <laughs> That's Thank, right. you. That's right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Right. Thank you, Scott. Thank you. Um, that kind of brings us full circle back to the presentation on rates. So, so having having made the decision to move forward with the with the plant design and and uh, with bidding, um, that would that would assume that we're going to build a plant. Um, you've, you've seen you've seen the numbers. Um, <coughs> Numbers uh, related to the um, system development fees uh, and the timeline. If we we you, you would have to uh, approve starting that process, and then we would have to give the the notices. Um, all that though is. It, it, Contingent upon Union County participation. So, we should plan on that. so really, the participation by the county is the next thing that has to be answered because you don't know whether that's going to be an eight percent or ten. Or ten. Well, can we? I'm sorry. Can we? Can we move forward? as far as the rate structure is concerned, choosing an option. And if it ends up being 8%, wonderful. If it ends up being 10%, it is what it is. I think we so. just, you is know, we'll wait and see what happens there. But we can go ahead and so make a decision. Do I hear consensus then at that point? Or is this a vote? Or is this a vote? vote on the rate structure? Yes. Yeah. Uh, there were, there were, I believe, three different options. That's right. That's right. 
queue. I have another queue. Okay. It's an option three. Option three. That's what I'm sure the message. Yes. Tiers. Tiered break structures. Yep. Yeah, this is the same. Yeah, the yeah, it's not. Do I have a motion? Do I have a motion for the, the rate study key decision point for the rate structure alternative? Before you make that motion, you've got two council members that are absent. The question is, and Ms. Anthony was here at three earlier. I understand, but we don't have both our proxy. Uh, and so the, que the question would be is, are you going to excuse her from voting? Or, are you going to, or is it going to be because she is part of a quorum and her vote was yes? She was going to. Okay. Yes. I'm just, and, and do we need, and, do we need to excuse him? And, yeah, and, count, and Councilman um, Anderson is ill today. So. I make a motion that we excuse Councilman Anderson. Okay. 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 I have a motion to second. Those in favor, please say one raise your hand. Okay. Now you can make a motion. Make a motion that we pass the tiered rate structure for water only. Option number three to be the set rate. I second that. I have a motion to second. Those in favor, please raise your hand. Madam Clerk, did you have? Did you, did you catch the motion? Yes. I mean, this was this is important. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Cost and how the cost are 
increasing. The sooner you can start collecting that, the better. And so it will be less that you're having to fund through the market. So I, my recommendation would be January, yeah, January the first, and that that gives us several months in order to make those public notices, etc. <coughs> That motion will die. Let's make a new motion. Let's make it for January. Um, for the rate structure. That's what I'm but saying. Just yeah, like we just have to find the original motion, I guess. Make sure we didn't vote on it. So you're January 1. For a tiered structure. Yeah, yeah, not on the 10 or 8 percent. Just yet. Option because number three. They adopted yeah. number three. Okay. Become okay, so make a motion because we've never voted on them. And it's okay. okay. So I make a motion that we set the uh, rate structure for the tiered rate for water only become effective January the 1st of 2025. Second. Motion second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Scott Clark, you will. Uh, Please make sure that all the appropriate notices on the website are done and that the appropriate notices are sent out to the customers as soon as possible. Yes. We also put notices in our power bills, utility bills. We can, we can put that in the power or in the utility bills. Yeah, that's a good idea. Okay. Yes, we can yes. put it in the bill or on um, the bill. Let, both. Please, please work with Scott on getting that. Thank you. Got two more slides on critical decision points if you want to go through. Yes. Yes. So just this is just summarizing some of the information that was presented today. Um, systematic flow monitoring program. Obviously, we're using utilizing uh, flow meters to quantify and locate inflow and infiltration. Documentation of those in, uh, inflow and infiltration reduction efforts as the program is implemented. Development of long-term sewer assessment rehabilitation costs. The projected cost to reduce inflow and infiltration, our current annual funding for sewer re rehabilitation is $500,000 in an annual revolving account that, is, that accrues over time. Projected budget, based on what CHA had provided today, is between two and two and a half million annually. Projected projections are minimums. Ex expeditious reduction requires increased funding. Projected costs for the 18-inch pipeline rehab on the golf course obtained, we're still obtaining additional quotes for approximately the 2,200 linear feet 18-inch pipeline mantle rehab. Uh, we're estimating the cost to be around 450 to $500,000. We've covered that information already. Current funding is available to do this job at this time. To begin, uh, Potentially in January, the last four to five weeks, uh, we've covered some of that. There's a four to six week lead time for materials to arrive, and we know that this work will affect the golf course. Can additional funding be appropriated to reduce inflow and infiltration? That's one of the key questions. You know. So my recommendation to the council is that, that we continue our systematic flow monitoring program um, as it has been presented and that will go forward annually. Uh, it will be reassessed annually, and the cost of that will be um, covered in the recommended budgets from year to year. Uh, the projected cost, cost for the, the, uh, the pipeline, uh, I do believe that project needs to go forward, and uh, as those bids uh, are received and um, a bidder is selected, that contract will come back to council for approval. I'm sure those need to be separate motions. There's I don't think there's any action necessary at this time. No, this is not a consensus. Yeah. Yeah. Those, those are consensus. my recommendations. Consensus. Consensus. It's all consensus. Yes. And, yes. and the second one, too, right? The golf course. Yeah. That'll come back to you. Okay. 
for final approval. Yes. Okay. That works. Never mind. And then, just just the last slide was current capacity at the wastewater plant is 10.4 million gallons, or 92.5 percent when all zone parcels are considered. We're at 78 percent of the permitted flow for parcels currently under construction, but the flow is not yet tributary, meaning those those houses have not yet come online. Currently designed three million gallon expansion. Again, cost will be between 95 and 100 million. Utilizing value engineering practices, will be at 60 percent completed design approximately in December. We'll be at 100 percent completed design in, in June. And advertise for bids. Bid opening is in August of 2025. Council approval in November 25. Construction in January 2026. Council direction was needed, and obviously we this. <coughs> Do we engage in further discussions with youth county for participation? And we, we've already covered this. So that's the result of yep. So, okay. And last slide was any questions? Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you for the time today. Thank you. Thank you, Scott. Thank you, Scott. And thank you, uh, Coach and Hazen, uh, for your presentation today. Uh, City Council, that. That wraps up all of the presentations and the decision points um, for council today. However, um, we have time left in this afternoon for any um, council discussion that you would like to have. If there are, are items you want to bring to staff's attention, items you want to see uh, staff um, work on in the near future, etc. Whatever whatever the council pleasure is for discussion at this time. And Mr. Mayor, I'll turn it over to you. Sure. Council, do uh, you think after all this information that we've gotten that you would like to address uh, at this time? You still have time tomorrow as well if you want to sit on some of these things. Okay. Um, we can. Well, anything else? I guess uh, overnight that you guys can think of. We will have an open discussion a bit more tomorrow, um, including the things that we just gave y'all to kind of look at that. Um, so I will start by uh, going around the table uh, with Councilman Carr and closing. Um, this has been incredibly productive, and the item I was going to bring up was regarding uh, our downtown historic designations, and I understand that's actually going on right now as we speak, that they're meeting with people downtown and, and tomorrow, so the unified designation of historic buildings and delineating the places in here, so that question will have an answer, I'm assuming. I'm, just, I'm assuming very soon. Um, were we going to talk any about streets? Yeah, that's already tomorrow. Streets is tomorrow and parking down is also tomorrow. Thank you. Um, I'll just say it again, it's been a very productive day and I appreciate all everyone's hard work and um, attendance and for setting all of this up and getting information to us. Yeah, I'd just like to echo um, what's already been said. Uh, thank you, staff, uh, for all your hard work and um, your countless hours of preparation. Uh, you know, I think we have the best city staff in the country. Uh, you, you guys are always on point. You do a good job, very thorough, and I appreciate your, your dedication and your commitment to our city. Um, with that being said, very, very productive day. It's time to go home. <laughs> <laughs> this is probably earliest everyone will be getting off in a while, right? Um, seriously, thank you all. Thank you, everyone who spoke, who's presented. Um, it's very encouraging to see the future of Monroe starting to play out. So, Lisa, Bridget, Sherry, thank you guys. Seriously. And now, uh, all the people, Angie's wife, yes, Angie, Lisa, and her team. Man, I've got to name everybody. <laughs> 
the uh, catering. Everything's been great. So we'll see y'all tomorrow. Um, so I'm looking for 7.30 breakfast. 7.30 breakfast. I'll be on time and do the first one. <laughs> yeah, motion to adjourn. Okay, I have a motion to second. Those in favor? Thank you all.